fifth graders. So here we have climate and vegetation. All right, again, focusing our studies on the physical geography of Africa. All right. Oh, one more thing before we begin. Remember, we're going to be interacting with our vodcast, so make sure you pause it and stop it as you need to to create that summary of what you learned um, and some of those important key factors. All right. So here we go. Um, as you notice, it's in the outline form, so you can take notes this way if you want to for class to bring them with you. If you want to, you don't have to. Um, we'll be doing a lot of work off of those summaries. Okay, um, so here we go. So climate factors, all right? Um, the distance from the equator. Africa's huge, all right? One of the largest continents next to Asia uh, on the planet. And the equator runs right through the midsection of Africa, right smack dab in the middle, all right? And because of that, um, we have these two zones, all right? We kind of talked about these in one of the classes uh, on Friday the 14th. Uh, these are called the Tropics of Cancer and Capricorn, okay? And so there's various different climates that exist between uh, these zones, all right? Um, so another thing is the role of elevation, all right? Obviously, the higher you go in elevation, the cooler it is. However, um, a really unique aspect in Africa is Somalia and Ethiopia where they are exactly almost the same distance from the equator uh, because of these different elevations they have different climates and we'll talk about that. Ethiopia is very dry uh, desert like Somalia is more jungle rainforest okay uh, so again unique perspective uh, in Africa all right and then with the rainfall um, Africa has two seasons, rainy season and wet season, all right? And so some areas can receive 100 inches of rain per year. Think about that. If you divide 12 into that, how many feet could that be? It's quite a bit of rain. Um, so, but there are other areas that don't receive rain for years, not talking like months or days or weeks. We're talking years without rain. Um, and because of this rain, it really affects the, the crop crops in these regions. So people have had to change what they plant um, and create kind of almost drought resistant uh, crops. Okay, uh, So some of the vegetation regions of Africa, um, the tropical rainforest, which we'll, we'll take a look at a map here shortly, um, located west and central Africa. You should know that from the chart that you created the other day. Um, these environments are great for trees, plants, and animals. Uh, and they pr also provide a lot of farming, fishing, hunting, and timber. Um, however, heavy logging threatens these forests because people are trying to find more farming area. Remember when we had that talk with uh, Mrs. Webb when she came in and she talked about the deforestation in Brazil? The same thing is going on in Africa, and it's having negative impacts on their economy. Um, the tropical savannas, again, that area where we almost always know where people from, you know, when we vision Africa, we vision those tropical savannas, those lush grasses, those little bushes all around, the, the lions stalking their prey through the grass, all right? This is what we're talking about here. Um, they also have a wet season, um, and, you know, the wet season supports farming with the, where the dry season does not. So the pe farmers have to farm during the wet season. If they can't get their crops up in the wet season, they will die within a few weeks, I believe, maybe a month uh, during the dry season because that's just how hot and dry it can get in Africa. And lastly, one of the things Africa is known for is, is deserts. Okay? Um, the Sahara you know, extends across most of northern Africa. And I have here a question that we're going to talk about in class, and I want you to remember this for class time. But is it really the world's largest desert? What defines what a desert is? Okay, we're going to talk about that in class because it's really unique. Um, you might be surprised by my answer, or maybe you won't. Who knows? Um, so the Sahel on the Sahara is, you know, this is what borders um, the Sahara Desert on the south. And it's very dry there, and very few plants um, can live and support there. And finally, um, we have Nambia and Kalahari, Kalahari which are in the south, um, which make up most of the countries of Nambia and Botswana. So again, some more deserts in the south of Africa as well. You'll see deserts in the north and in the south. Okay, so here we go. Here is that map all right, that we were talking about. Okay, look over here in the key, um, tropical wet. You know, here's the equator, right there in the middle, right there at zero. 
all right notice that there are rainforests and such on either side of it okay up here yeah, I'll turn down my drawing tool up here if you look up here roughly around 23 degrees north and roughly down here around 23 degrees south we have the Tropic of Capricorn in the south the Tropic of Cancer up here in the north okay notice right around these areas where these tropics are a lot of the times is where you'll see deserts think about what the Middle East is like okay very hot very dry all right desert all through here if we go if we follow these into the United States, uh, into Mexico is where they usually hit. Um, it's again, there's dry, deserty areas in there as well. And same thing in South America. If you could remember where that was, where it hit in South America, we had a lot more mountains there, but again, dry, not great for uh, farming. Okay. So again, you know, just kind of peruse the map a little bit, look at the various different um, climates that they have, think about elevation in that region. To think about where the equator is relative to it. Remember, we talked about Ethiopia, and what was the other one? Can you remember? Can you remember which one's equidistant from it? You'll have to figure that one out in class. All right, or maybe you did get the correct answer. Anyways, um, we will talk later. So have a great time with this. Remember interact with your video and fill out that summary. It's very important for class. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.